and welcome into our last foray into this week's Sedra of Parshat Bo. Um, by the way, this is the Sedra where, where Rashi said the Torah might well have started with this Sedra, which would be actually Exodus 12. We haven't gotten to Exodus 12 yet, and we probably won't get to Exodus 12, but this is where the first mitzvah is given to the Jewish people. And let me make a bracha before I go any further. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu l'asok b'divrei Torah. So the, um, I, was, I was saying that uh, this is the first mitzvah that's given to the Jewish people. We are not going to actually read those verses, but the very first mitzvah is that this is the first month of the year for the Jewish people, Nisan, the month they left Egypt. So let's get back into the Rashi right now, and I'm going to start the screen share. All right. <sighs> Here we are, verse 27. Uh, what's happened is they have um, just finished the plague of darkness, and here, and they are, uh, Pharaoh has been in a negotiation with Moses, and that negotiation has failed. By Chazek Hashem et Lev Paro, and the Hashem uh, hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the Lo Ava Lishalcham, and he did not desire to send them, to, to free them, but it means to send them away. So yeah. I just want to mention because, um, Chabad, interestingly, translates chazak, you know, whatever the vaychazek as strengthen. Yes, it's true. And I kind of like that, but mm -hmm. it may be, you know, that hardens better, but because it implies that Pharaoh already had it in him to be um, not wanting to let them go. And it's not like God introducing something to him. It's like, intensifying what he already has in his heart. Correct. He, 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 he strengthened his resolve. And I, I like that, Lauren. I'm glad you pointed that out because it, it, it takes away a little bit of the idea that Pharaoh didn't have free choice. Um, yeah, and a lot the, of it. Yeah, right. I, no, it's I was just nice. going to say the same thing yes. that, or in the same vein that I hadn't ever registered that that, that that was the verb there, the Hebrew verb. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and also, you know, as my concept connection to my higher power um, is that, I mean, if you're aligned with your Yetzer HaTov, um, then it's there to be, to listen to and receive all the support and that you can get for it. And if you're aligned with your Yitzhahara, uh, you know, it's dangerous for the same kind of reasons. You'll use all the uh, justifications and support you can get for it. And this, this, yeah, why do they translate it hardened? It causes theological problems. Why have they translated it that way? Right. So I, I was thinking of that as we were talking about it. And I suspect that perhaps when that translation was originally made, uh, hardening, they understood it as meaning to hard, to strengthen his resolve. And That's somehow in, true. in English usage, somehow we've taken a different tack on it and put a different... Modern uh, English usage, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I suspect that is the case. Uh, and I think it's good that Chabad did something. I think they did the right thing in, in going back to a more literal translation uh, because it does. It, there's no question that that is, you know, Lauren, you really did bring out a, a subtlety that's an important subtlety. Um, and, and Judith, I think you, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, we sort of, when we are working emotionally, and in some ways it sort of refers to a, brief conversation we were having before we started class is that when you get into an emotional place it's like something that is moving so that we're talking now about a vector 
So if your vector is to go in one direction, you tend to use your reasoning to support that vector. And if your vector is in the opposite direction, you do the same thing. And uh, I just read in the paper about a, a, the QAnon representative in Congress who is trying to bring articles of impeachment. From Georgia. Him. Yeah, yeah. So, Important. so God, because God supports people mm -hmm. generally, He mm -hmm. doesn't change them. He supports them to a, you know, to and and in this case, it had to do with, with um. Well, I mean, he had reasons. It's, it's a he had a plan in mind that we don't completely understand. But I mean, I heard a commentator who uh, uh, deals with literature on um, NPR. Mm -hmm. um, this was decades ago. Said we couldn't really read Little Women the way that it was written. Mm -hmm. He used this as an example mm -hmm. because so much of the vocabulary means something different than it did in the day that it was written that unless we really understand the context of what um, of those words in those times, we're not really reading it. We're reading it with our modern understanding of those words and it changes a lot. Right. And, wow. wow, I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah, That's and good. I hadn't either, but it makes a lot of sense. So, so the-, the And the, it applies, I, I think, to this. It does, it does. So one thing, for example, is why tshuva, tshuva is so powerful and why tshuva is so important because what it's saying in some ways is that our decision to do tshuva comes from a deep place within ourselves that truly we can get full credit for that tshuva because um, there's uh, this sort of, I'm trying to think of what it's called. Um, there's the, the, the energy is to keep it going in the same direction, right? It's like Newton's, momentum. One, of, one of Newton's laws of motion. Momentum. Yes, right. That, that our, our emotional momentum will keep pushing us towards a certain, in a certain direction, stronger and stronger. And it becomes harder and harder to do tshuva because tshuva in some ways represents resistance to that motion. Mm -hmm. Second point that comes out of this, I I'm, I'm so appreciate bringing this up, is that this is exactly what I'm trying to do when you say trying to understand it on its own terms, when you gave the example of little women, that if you think about it, what I'm trying to do is understand what's going on here, the way Rashi understood it as best as we can. And that's why we go back to Rashi's own words and we try to, you know, why try to read it in the original language uh, and all those kinds of things. And philosophically, um, um, it's a phenomenological approach, meaning I'm very aware of it. So like when people use the term man and they want to say people, substitute people, and they don't want to use the term he for God and stuff like that, that has to do with a very modern way of looking at those words. Because I suspect, even though I realize that uh, for reasons that were unfair and fair and whatever, I mean, it's very complex, you know, women had a very different role, you know, years ago. And I'm not saying that that the change hasn't been welcome. It's just that there's a lack of understanding then that goes ahead because I don't think anybody was sort of looking at masculinity necessarily and did understand um, mankind as, as including womankind as well, that they weren't necessarily putting a gender, you know, a heavy, let's say a heavy gender meaning on it, you know, sort of mankind as opposed to womankind. I know we could get into a whole big discussion. We sure about could, that, and let's not do it now. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, look, because there are arguments pro and con there. There really are. And that's really all I would want to try and do is to try and understand it in its own context. And you know, not necessarily to justify, but at least to understand it. So thank you and thanks for letting me say that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's go can on. I, can I just say one more thing of about this? Of course, them? of course, go ahead. How I keep looking at God also, and, you know, I've been grappling with God, you know, um, and my understanding and others understanding. 
And I keep coming to the understanding that um, God, if, if God to me is infinite possibilities, then I can pray to God as he, as my father, or mm -hmm. she, as my mother, mm -hmm. um, and not exclude anything else and not exclude anyone else for how they express themselves. Thank you. Thanks. No, thank you. That for makes sense to me too. I mean, God is the protector. God is the nourisher. Exactly. That's right. That's right. And, and truthfully, when you talk about Abraham, especially in prayer, in the context of prayer, I think this is important and worth taking a moment about. One is really thinking about mercy uh, and uh, rachamim. That's what one, uh, let me think. No, chesed. When you say Abraham, it's simply a personification of chesed, right? Of loving kindness, that that is what captures uh, Abraham's but Abraham and Sarah's personalities. And when you say Isaac, you're thinking of Dean, you're thinking of judgment. And when you think of, when you mention Jacob, you're actually referring to the quality of, of, uh, of uh, Rachamim, of mercy. So, um, you know, it's, it's important not to sort of totally block out any possibilities because it's not about their their personal it's not about them so much it's more about the values that they're supposed to encapsulate so that's i think that's important uh, to understand it that way at any rate at least to give that as part of the mix let's keep unless you want to comment on what i just said i'm happy to go on all right vayomer lo faro so Pharaoh said to him, Lech me'alai, go from me, get out, he was saying, basically, get out of here. He shamer lecha, and be careful, al tosefro ad panai, not to see my face again. Get out and stay out, is what he's saying, right? Ki bayom ruotcha panai, because on the day that I see your face, Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, the other way around. Reotcha would be, you see my face. On the day you see my face, Tamut, you will die. Okay, so that's that's how this negotiation's coming to an yeah. end. And also it says, it says interesting, it says Tamut, because usually when it's God's word, it says, you know, Mechumat to whatever. So it's like, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. With Pharaoh, there's not that certainty. He's not God. He can't say it, you know, in the right. same way God could. Right, right. Although I suppose, you know, technically one could say that, but but you're right. It's a it's an interesting. It's an idle threat. No, no, no. It's it's interesting. Yes, because he's a human being. Right, right. But here, okay, well, there's a nice Rashi on this. Let's take a look. Uh, I guess it's onwards. So this is Moses's response. Vayomer Moshe, Moses said, Cain di Barta, you have spoken the truth. You know, you've spoken well. well. Well said, he says to him. Very well put. Yes, yes exactly. Lo osif od ruot panecha. I will not again see your face. Literally, I will not be in your presence again. Um, that's, you know, you, you, don't know you, don't, you don't know what you just said, right? So here's the Rashi. Cain dibarti, dibarta, yafe dibarti, dibarta. I keep saying dibarti. I'm sorry. Yafe dibarta. You you've spoken beautifully. Uvismano dibarta, and at the right time, you said it at the right moment. Uh, emet, you spoke the truth in its proper time. Shelo osif odru od panecha, because I'm not going to see your face again. You're right. You're right. About the Tamut is a different story, but he was right about the first part. And now we on to chapter 11. Vayome Hashem el Moshe, Hashem said to Moses, Od nega echad avi al paro, I will bring another plague on Pharaoh, the al Mitzrayim, and on Egypt. Acharechen, after this, Yishalach etchem mizeh, he will send you from this. Kishalcho, when he sends you, Kala, it will be a complete sending. He's going to send you completely. Gareshi, Gareshi, he will indeed chase you out 
Nicaea from this. Now, I have to tell you right now, this is happening while Moses is still in the presence of Pharaoh, because you're going to see that he is going to have to speak again. In he will be, in fact, in Pharaoh's presence. So it's before he actually left that Moses got this mes message from God. So there's some words here that we need to look at, and Rashi gets right into it. Okay, kala, kala. And it's from it's related to the word kol in Hebrew, kaflamid, meaning all, all. And this is the Aramaic translation, gemeira, gemeira. There it is in the Aramaic, right? Benito. Yeah, yes. Completely, completely. Kala, kalil, kulchem, ishalech. He is going to send all of you, every bit of you. Okay, that's what he's saying that God is telling him. Not, no one is going to stay behind. No, no person, no animal, no thing, nothing. Going to totally, completely get you out of Egypt. You're all going to leave 100%. Now, Daberna uh, you speak, please, please speak in the ears of the people, literally, that they should uh, borrow, I think is the word that would work here, but they're not really borrowing. Uh, or maybe it means they should request. It says borrow here, but... I know. Well, but yeah. right. A man from his fellow, and a woman from her friend, her woman friend, vessels uh, of silver and vessels of gold. All right, let's see if there's, there's no... Uh, yeah, there is. Taberna. Please speak. And again, ein na, the word na, ela lashon bakasha, is a language of, it's an expression of asking. Bevakasha mimcha please of please of you in other words like i have a favor to ask of you he's here it's so interesting <laughs> he's 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 saying listen he's as it were god is saying to the israelites do me this favor please ask your neighbors you know women etc uh, uh for for vessels of silver and vessels of gold and here's the implications beautiful beautiful uh cool interpretation is he Ram al kach He, he, well, literally, Lahaz here means to warn, okay? But somehow he implored them regarding this. In other words, there was an urgency regarding this request. Shelo yomar oto tzadik, that that, that tzadik, that righteous man, Avraham, okay, Abraham, that's that tzadik. So now that that tzaddik should not say the ivdum the inu otam kiem that the Abraham shouldn't say about me this is God that that part of the prophecy that I gave Abraham that included they shall serve them and they will abuse them this is part of that prophecy in back in Genesis of the covenant between the pieces kiem he he established that he did that he fulfilled that. By him, amongst them. The Acharechen Yetsu Birchush Gadol. This is the second part of that prophecy. And after this, they shall depart with many possessions. Lokiem by him. He did not fulfill for them. So so cool that he's. That's why there's urgency about this because God, as it were, doesn't want to be accused that he only fulfilled part of the prophecy he made to Abraham, who was a tzaddik, meaning that Abraham might have a right to bring a complaint. So that's why there is this. Please, please make sure that they do this, that they that they take these, ask them for these things. But also that shows that, you know, God expects us to help him with his will. Yes. And I'm using the masculine terms. I don't, you know, whatever. Right. Yes. Um, 
yeah, I mean, we that's part of what gives us purpose is that and and meaning and and uh, a certain amount of um, worth is that God makes this space for us, right? This tsimtsum on God's part mm -hmm. to, uh, to give us the choice of fulfilling his will or not fulfilling his mm -hmm. will. But I mean, that's what all the mitzvahs are about. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the mitzvot, right? Yep. God, God commands us, he doesn't, he gives us choice. Yeah. We can do it or we don't. That's but, right. But to understand, right? I mean, this is this would be such a comeuppance culturally for us if we realized there is glory in service. To be able to serve your fellow human beings, to be able to serve your community, to be able to serve your spouse, to be able to serve your family. This is what gives you a sense of worth. And it's, I love to mention that the word knight, right, which is a title, is actually related to the word, German word, knicht. That's why it's K-N-I-G-H-T, because the G-H was probably pronounced at one time as a ch, right? And a knecht is a servant. And that's knighthood. And of course, one of the mottos in England, okay, is ich dien, it's German, which means I serve. And so we're, we're, we, we put so much emphasis on liberty, okay? And we don't put understanding that to have the freedom to serve is like, wow, that's to be underlined. And I'm not saying it isn't mentioned, I just don't think people realize that when you serve others, it is the very key element of your own feeling of worthiness and worthwhileness. And we, are, we have seen some examples of how the opposite is also true, that when you only serve yourself, you feel like nothing. So to serve God, think about that, how true right. that is then. If you're talking about service to God, we have one more verse. Yes. For this Parsha, this uh, Aliyah. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Vayiten Hashem et Chain Ha'am Mitzrayim. So God gave, God gave the favor of, of the people in the eyes of the Egyptians, meaning he caused the Egyptians to look on the people, the Israelites, favorably. By the way, Goodwill is about everything, right? Gam ha'ish Moshe, also the man Moses, gadol ma'od, was, uh, was very great for Eretz Mitzrayim. In other words, he had this incredible reputation in the land of Egypt. He was considered a major force in Egypt, major personality. Ve'enei avdei faro, in the eyes of Pharaoh's servants, ve'enei ha'am, and in the eyes of the Israelites, right? One thing to be a visiting fireman. It's another thing. Look at look at the order, by the way. They start with the with the um, <clears throat> the more expected to the less expected. Excuse me. <clears throat> I, I think in some ways I almost think there's some humor here, right? I mean, not only was he considered a major force amongst the Egyptians, even his own people thought he was a major force. A great, a great man. He was considered a great man. And still in Arab countries, the the Arab version of the name Moses is a common name. Yes, Musa. Moses and right. Solomon and I know. And Abraham, right. and Abraham. Right. Oh, Ibrahim, very much so. You have you find many Ibrahims. Yeah. Well, you also find many versions of Solomon and Moses. Yes. Yes. I I, I will tell you I've come across Ibrahim even more often. That's just my own limited experience. Onwards. Vayomer Moshe, Moses said, Ko Amar Hashem. This, so he's saying this uh, again now within in Pharaoh's presence, right? Ko Amar Hashem, thus saith the Lord, Kachatzot Halila, at the um, in the at the middle of the night, around the middle of the night. I am going to go out 
in, in the midst of Egypt. Now there's a long Rashi here, and I think uh, it's, okay. Well, there's a short one and then a long one. Okay, let's do as, as much as we can and I'll put a little mark in. Vayome Moshe ko amar Hashem. Thus, uh, so Moses said, thus saith the Lord. And here's the point. This was said while he was standing in Pharaoh's presence. It was said, he was given this prophecy. Because otherwise we're going to have an inconsistency, right? Because indeed, when he left his presence, he did not uh, come, he did not re-enter his presence. He did not see his face, literally. Let's stop here um, because we, we have, there's a lot to be said here. So I'm going to put in the, Marker here. Okay, and just here too. So next year we'll give it another shot. I'm going to stop the share. Any last comments before we move on? Before I stop the recording. Excellent today. There's just so much that I'm came glad, up that was excellent. Glad you enjoyed it. All right. And, and yeah. for me, I'm so glad that I pushed through some of the really distasteful stuff that you know when i came on first you know studying because i haven't i didn't even study from the beginning of covid with y'all mm. and um you know i came in and you know stuff some stuff really riled me let's just put it that way mm. <laughs> i know it's hard to believe um <laughs> but um, i'm just so glad that i pushed through to see the deeper layers of what this is all about and what I came to this morning, it's discovering these values in community and we're, this is opening discussions between us all. Mm. And I mean, it's mind blowing. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you get it. I, I agree. I think that, you know, this, it comes right down to saying, you know, part of what makes my life worthwhile is what we're doing right now. And mm -hmm. of being able to do it with friends and, and, and other people, and which, as I said before, forces me to concentrate, uh, especially, you know, and to be much more rigorous in terms of what I'm trying to understand, making sure I understand it so that I can explain it, things like that. I mean, and I cannot tell, I'm going to say it again. There've been so many times when I've been mildly depressed and when I've started to study and I've left feeling my heart is now light again, you know, lighthearted because of this. At any rate, Shabbat Shalom. Stop the recording.